When you think of someone in a state of fear, what do you imagine? Perhaps a frightened person, vulnerable, helpless. Maybe a stunt that's both daring and death-defying. But fear can be found in much more smaller qualities. Procrastination, social anxiety, fear of failure, the fear of the what if. These are all outcomes and effects of fear. In fact, the National Institute of Health reported that nearly one in three adolescents between ages 13 to 18 experience an anxiety disorder. So we experience this fear more commonly than we think, subconsciously or consciously, in anything that we do. So how can we overcome this fear? I experienced this firsthand while working on a coding project throughout the school year. My project set out to solve the problem of summarizing mass amounts of data. Now, I always find it annoying to go scroll through thousands of web articles or words when I need something specific and simplified. The program allowed me to upload documents, URLs, text, and it would return the summarization to the user. With COVID-19 and remote learning, I noticed I had a lot of time on my hands, so I started to take the idea of implementing this solution seriously. So the first thing I did was I created a list of all the different components of the project, the goals I want to accomplish, and the end vision and the polished product. And the first couple of weeks went smoothly. I was completing a lot of my goals, and I was getting a lot of work done. But eventually, I was met with problems. For example, one of my goals was to allow for the text extraction from websites. But oftentimes, something in the program wasn't working, or there was a bug in the code. That week, I failed to accomplish a couple of my goals, and I found myself getting more set back and frustrated. I felt as though I wasn't accomplishing anything, even though I was. You see, I had this high achiever mindset. If I didn't complete this by this time, or I fail, I wasn't good enough. This made me feel burnt out and discouraged from continuing, and I started to procrastinate and avoid the development of the project, and I'd work on other aspects of the program that were easier, instead of tackling the main problem. Eventually, I got so fed up with myself that I knew that something needed to change, and it did. This time, I restarted, but I ignored all my ambitious goals I set myself out to complete, and instead, I took it step by step. And after each and every development session, I would write down what I did. Which brings me to my first strategy of how I overcame this fear of failing to complete the goal. Which is, don't just track your goals. Track your progress and your mistakes. I would write down what I learned. I remember fixing this bug in my code and I would write it down. And I would write down what I accomplished. For example, when I complete styling a part of my application, I'll just write down start locket form. No matter how small or large my contribution was, I wrote it down. I tracked progress, not ambition. Instead of the initial approach of trying to complete this list of ambitious goals and getting frustrated whenever I didn't complete one, I started to notice that through this method of tracking, that I was accomplishing more than I realized. See, I got so caught up in trying to complete the goal that I forgot all about the small, important details that mattered as much. And it was during the process leading up to that goal where I learned so much. See, the purpose of each goal wasn't so that I had to accomplish that goal by that time, but rather to push myself to learn something new so I could apply it in the future. I was catching mistakes I made, I was fixing new errors, I was learning new things. No matter how small the detail, the whole process is a learning process. And this all contributes to a much more positive mindset with a focus on positive results and a healthy balance between ambition and learning. A learning-based approach rather than one that is task-oriented. During the development of the project, I failed to complete multiple goals and assignments I set myself to complete, but it was during failure when I learned the most. Each failure pushing me to get more comfortable with failing and allowing me to understand that failure is growth. Whether that's when I failed to properly implement a new database or account for all the edge cases, which led to a lot of mistakes. And it was this illusion of fear that held me back during the planning and design of the project. During the entirety of the project, I doubted whether or not I would even reach the vision I had set out or how this project would turn out. I feared the idea of setting out to complete this project but never being able to follow through with what I had said. 
I designed and planned the pages of the applications, the roles, their purposes. But as I went on and developed each aspect of the product, the outcome would constantly change. For example, a part of the project required me to create a page with the summaries, the text, and the original text. And I didn't want all this information to be placed all in one page, or it would be very cluttered and hard to read. So I experimented with different layouts. The initial designs were simple, and they were good, but they were not immersive to the user. But the idea of steering in a different direction was intimidating. But I took that risk, and I experimented with a variety of different layouts and designs, pivoting from my initial ideas. And there was a lot of wasted time and energy. But after each different layout and design, it became more clear and more logical, each iteration becoming better than the previous. And this brings me to my fourth and fifth points, which are take risks and understand that it is okay to pivot from the initial visualized goal slash product. I had the fear of doing something different or new only to waste time and energy, and I did. But it's through taking risks and trying something new that I understood and experienced what I did not know before and obtained more knowledge. Thus my perspective and my understanding constantly evolving and changing. Looking back, this fear I had each step of the way originated from my lack of knowledge. I didn't know the answer to my problems, the outcome of my actions, the result of my hard work, the unknown. But as I started to learn and progress, I gained more experience, insight, and understanding. And slowly, I started to measure my success by my progress rather than my goals. And step by step, I started to uncover pieces to the puzzle. And as my outlook and my thoughts started to change, the end became clearer and clearer. The intent is not to eliminate fear, because we need it. Fear allows us to think rationally, but we must not allow it to limit ourselves in the choices that we make. These feelings of intimidation and fear don't sound like much in the grand scheme of things, but they model the way we think and approach problems. Amidst COVID-19 and harder times ahead, there's no perfect time to overcome our fears, express ourselves more, and break that barrier. Thank you for listening, and I wish you all a great year.